to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Cerebrolysin, also known as FPF 1070, is the very interesting peptide preparation we're exploring today. So it's derived from porcine brain tissue and is used in various neurological conditions. Since the only other Cerebrolysin video I have is on the Patreon, we can do a more comprehensive overview before heading into the nootropic efficacy details. So Cerebrolysin, simply put, is a proprietary formulation of low molecular weight peptides and amino acids derived from the porcine sign or pig brain tissue. And although the specific peptides are not fully disclosed, it's believed to include various neurotrophic factors such as brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, glial cell-derived neurotrophic factor, GDNF, nerve growth factor, NGF, and ciliary neurotrophic factor, or CNTF. But in a nutshell, neurotrophic factors are of growing interest in different neuropsychiatric realms, ranging from mood and different psychiatric illnesses to cognition and memory. And thus, increasing presence of neurotrophic factors is thought to be restorative, and it's an idea behind why some people may find benefit with Cimax. So essentially, cerebrolysin was designed to mimic the function of these different neurotrophic factors. And as we hinted at, there's a body of research invested in delving into neurotrophic factors because their function appears to be multifaceted in nature, ranging from promotion of neuronal cell survival to their proliferation, differentiation, and regeneration, as well as in neuroplasticity. The first of the neurotrophic neurotrophic factors isolated is nerve growth factor, NGF, and it's one of the quite likely components of cerebrolysin. There were findings in the mid-20th century that it influenced neuronal cells survival, proliferation, migration, synaptogenesis, and regeneration, which, as this piece highlights, was contradictory to the popular opinion at the time, which was essentially that structural neurology was limited and unable to be changed. And it earned the researcher invested in this topic, its discoverer, Rita Levi Montalcini, the Nobel Prize of Medicine and Physiology a few decades later in 1986. And Levi Montalcini's work inspired a whole new sect of research, and BDNF was discovered in the 1980s. All this to say that the world of neurotrophic research is by no means a brand new, but it's also not the oldest, and with regards to neurochemistry, mood, and all these different neurocognitive illnesses, it's pivotal and quite fascinating, and I'm sure that moving forward, it's a topic that will be continually investigated. And for the sake of this video and keeping you awake, we're not going to analyze every detail ever founded with regards to these different neurotrophic factors. However, we will touch on the relevance of these in this product that's proposed neurotropic and involved with these different neuroprotective roles, cerebrolysin. But before we do, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best and quite likely only way to help a small peptide YouTuber like me out. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, let's start off by saying that unlike many of the products we've discussed, Cerebrolysin is actually approved for use in quite a few countries, including Austria, Germany, China, Russia, and South Korea. And the term Cerebrolysin is actually registered to a company called Ever Pharma, an Austrian company with a pretty big presence in Germany as well. And their product, Cerebrolysin, is indicated for treatment of senile dementia of Alzheimer's type, vascular dementia, stroke, and craniocerebral trauma. And Cerebrolysin.com is a webpage owned and operated by this pharmaceutical company. And honestly, the legitimacy of this website, high-definition visuals, and ease of use are really not something I get to see much in this space, so overall it's a great resource, or at least that's what I thought until I noticed a misspelling of the word enzyme, but I digress, I'm not here to nitpick, I'm going to hold this as legitimate, and I've investigated the sources, and so this is the real deal, they just made a misspelling, it happens, we all make mistakes. But there are videos and graphics highlighting the research that led to cerebral license indication for different types of neurocognitive illnesses like antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects as well as an inhibition on the calpin protease, thus making it anti-apoptotic in nature. And just to give you a little sample, we can watch some of the clip on the homepage. When a brain injury occurs, cerebralizin, a parenteral biological drug consisting of peptides and amino acids, is given to the patient by infusion. In this way, cerebralizin reaches its place of action, the targeted tissue in the brain, directly and in full concentration. 
So before we investigate the nootropic specific potential of cerebral lysin, it's worth wrapping up what the data has essentially indicated at this point as plenty of it is quite crucial and we're going to go through it. So it appears that through neurotrophic activity, cerebral lysin has shown promise in assisting recovery of different types of neurological deficits due to different types of conditions. And as there are all these different low molecular weight peptides present in this formulation, they're thought to essentially promote neuroplastic changes via different signaling pathways through influence on these different facets. As in some of these features include stimulation of neurogenesis and synaptogenesis, anti-apoptotic properties, i.e. against the initiation of programmed cell death, prevention of free radical formation, making it an antioxidant, and apparent protection against excitotoxicity, which generally frames the product as neuroprotective. And treatment with cerebral lysin is known to downregulate TNF-alpha and pro-NGF while upregulating VEGF, BDNF, IGF-1, and NGF expression. Now, when we talk about downregulation of TNF-alpha, this is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, so its decreased presence would oftentimes be positive in somebody with baseline high properties of inflammation. Of course, if somebody's sick, upregulating inflammation is how we protect ourselves and how the body activates defense systems and fights against illness, but prolonged inflammation, as we know, can be deleterious. And on top of that, pro-NGF is a precursor form of NGF that's oftentimes dysregulated in Alzheimer's disease, and in particular in rodents, pro-NGF was found to be increased as they age. We have before discussed VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, which promotes formation of new vasculature and is thought to be influenced by BPC-157. And we've also discussed IGF-1, the most downstream product of the hormonal pathway that takes growth hormone releasing hormone to growth hormone and then to IGF-1, which is eventually released by the liver. And although it's been shown in Everpharma's research to influence IGF-1, confirmation about whether this product is actually included in the cerebral lysin preparation hasn't been disclosed. Now, there's nothing that reverses Alzheimer's disease. However, it appears that the research indicates cerebral lysin's utility in improving cognitive performance for those suffering. And it's been exactly exhibited in a pretty large sample size to provide a statistically significant beneficial effect with regards to general cognitive and global functions in the elderly diagnosed with certain types of dementia. Additionally, in the context of stroke, administration of cerebral lysin has shown benefit with regards to level of deficit global disability, activities of daily living, also known as ADLs, things like toileting, showering, transferring, reduction of volume of the infarct, motor function, and post-stroke depression. There's also been a reduction in mortality in the context of stroke visualized in those treated with cerebral lysin versus placebo, more pronounced in more severe strokes as determined by the NIHSS stroke scoring scale. Similar findings were echoed in TBI, or traumatic brain injury patients, as measured by a series of CAPTAIN trials that sought to evaluate use of the compound in the context of these brain injuries. And as such, in the published CAPTAIN-2 trial report, researchers conclude, and I quote, As a complex biological agent with unique pharmacologic properties, cerebral lysin has a truly multimodal mechanism of action that mirrors endogenous defense responses in the brain, allowing anti-correlated transition from immediate neuroprotection protection processes that limit impairment to profound and long-term neurorecovery by promoting neurotrophicity, neuroplasticity, and neurogenesis. Lots of repetition of the word neuro, but you get the point, and despite the fact that this took me about 25 takes to not completely butcher it, it's certainly fascinating. One of the most interesting pieces I found is that cerebral lysin was actually compared to one of the most popular drugs used in patients with dementia today, called denepazil, which is a cholinesterase inhibitor used to delay features of cognitive decline in dementia. It's not a treatment of Alzheimer's as none exists, but it can slow the deleterious process in some. And denepazil combined with cerebral lysin showed a synergistic benefit with regards to neural plasticity in the prefrontal cortex of aged mice. And in humans, cerebral lysin was found to be as safe and effective as denepazil, and hopefully more research conducted will compare these products alongside and in combination in others to assess their synergy and the significance of such. 
So obviously there is more invested in cerebral lysin than in most of these peptides we discuss on the channel. From clinical research and quantitatively impressive number of patients and their different patient populations to approved and actual use, every time I review this one I remember how truly intriguing it is. And these findings do appear legitimate and there is a much broader body of research that supports these claims than with some acts which we recently discussed for instance. Now what's this mean for the casual peptide hobbyist and is there any nootropic value? Let's start off by saying that I worry about production of a lot of these compounds, and you've heard me stand on my internet soapbox a million times and describe the complexity and nebulosity surrounding the FDA's ban on peptide compounding. And there's not really a positive or benefit that came out of this because it feels as if there's even less regulation on what's made in addition to other issues like halting of research on some of these things. And we're really stuck in a catch-22 because notwithstanding all these different financial incentives at play, by a essentially banning investigation into these peptides due to unclear safety concerns, we prevent further research that further prevents us from understanding these safety concerns. But regardless, when we talk about a peptide synthesized from pig brains of all things, that's enough for me to say, nah, I'm good. Unless I was getting it from a pharmaceutical source, this is not one I would mess around with on the gray underground market, whatever you want to call it nowadays. I don't mess around with animal brains, and I know I'm being a bit facetious here, but that's just my stance, and it's not going to change on this peptide quite likely. And although it appears generally well tolerated, like with any compound, there are a myriad of possible adverse effects from injection site reaction to mood changes, confusion, agitation, and increased blood pressure. And in addition to previous reactions with the compound, contraindications to its use include history of epilepsy or seizure disorder, and severe renal impairment. It's also worth noting that it hasn't been evaluated in pregnant or lactating women. However, in animals, it appears to be generally safe. Now, how do we make sense of of giving cerebralysin the title of a nootropic when it has only really been researched in the contexts of different types of dementia, traumatic brain injury, and other cerebrovascular events, well, if we look on Google, we see that a nootropic is defined as a drug used to enhance memory or other cognitive functions. So by definition of all the compounds we've looked into, cerebralysin is the one that most strongly and most repeatedly fits this definition. I think quite obviously cerebralysin is a nootropic. I think in otherwise healthy adults, detecting a palpable change in cognitive function may be tough and intricate, as these sorts of things are much easier to detect via interview, diagnostic tools, and imaging conducted on aged folks with neurocognitive decline. But anecdotal evidence supports that some people feel like it is a nootropic, and some people do find benefit with it, others don't feel a thing. And to be frank, research doesn't evaluate this as a nootropic in otherwise healthy adult-aged individuals. And by judging everything that we've read and all these overlapping neurocognitive slash cerebrovascular conditions in which it's used, it makes sense that it's not researched in healthy people. But regardless, as far as I'm concerned, based on the available research, cerebral license shows significant potential as a nootropic, especially in clinical settings for neurodegenerative conditions. However, tying this all up, its effects in healthy individuals and its comparative efficacy with other nootropics like Cimax remain areas for further exploration. However, quite obviously, this is much more strongly investigated than was Cimax, and we're going to have to see about Selang, which will be an upcoming video. That said, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you found it educational, entertaining. Before we go, forgot to mention that the link to the Patreon will be in the description below if you're looking for a way to further support the channel. We just did a video on Amazon on peptides, which was a nice distraction for me, but there's a lot of evidence-based content on there as well. And as we've made a habit by now, links to all the research utilized and consulted in making this video will be in the description as well. If you did like it, give us a thumbs up. If you hated it, give us a thumbs down. Regardless, thank you for the time, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. <laughs>